This is the tale of a trifle. This is the story of one small part, one of the thousands of unsung trifles that go into the making of our fighting weapons. The bolts, the screws, the clips, the springs, all the gadgets behind the arms that throw their shadows over every great conference. Quebec, Casablanca, London, Washington, and Berlin. This is the biography of one of those fragments, the life and death of a small steel ball. Cooperating with our war department is a group of experts, scientists, economists, businessmen, operatives. It's their job to lay the groundwork for the bombing of the enemy's industrial targets. They must learn all there is to know about the oil from Ploesti and steel from the Ruhr, guns from Skoda and tanks from Essen, radio electronics from Eindhoven and optics from Jena, submarines from San Nazaire and rubber from Hanover. Where to strike with the greatest cost to the enemy at the smallest cost to ourselves? Which of these targets shall we hit and when shall we hit them? Tanks? Guns? Yes, they're on the program, with repeat performances on the way. What else? Where is his softest spot? Aircraft assembly plants? Good, but these plants are widely scattered. The destruction of what product, or part of a product, would do most to cripple Nazi power? What product is manufactured in the most concentrated plants? What product, large or small? Two-thirds of Germany's anti-friction bearing industry is concentrated in Schweinfurt am Main. Anti-friction bearings without which modern war with its demand for lightning speed cannot function. Anti-friction bearings, roller bearings, ball bearings. Nothing spectacular about the ball bearing. It's not as deadly as a German 88. But the 88 couldn't do its job without it. It's not as big as the Mark VI, but the Mark VI couldn't hurl its mile-a-minute attack without it. Bearings, 4,000 of them in a Dornier, 2,000 of them in a Fokker Bull 190, 1,000 of them in the controls alone of a Junkers 88. Bearings made with one twenty-thousandth of an inch tolerance, so dependent on perfection that one faulty ball in a propeller shaft could cause this. Small, insignificant balls of steel, but essential to everything German or Japanese, American or British, Russian or Chinese, that moves, steers, and aims, and swims, and fires, and hits. Bearings in the machines that make the bearings. Bearings in the trains that carry the bearings. Bearings in the American bombers that must destroy the bearings that turn in Nazi weapons. Why attack the Ruhr industry when the key to the whole industrial setup is this small part? Schweinfurt not only makes bearings, but makes the machines that make the bearings. Schweinfurt must be so bombed that assembly lines all over Germany will shut down. And when they start up, Schweinfurt must be bombed again. And now, what is known about the target itself? Before the war, German industrialists were proud of the catalogs they issued. Catalogs can be very useful when you're collecting certain kinds of information. This bird's eye view of the Vereinigte Kugelager Fabriken works, for instance. Or this glorified version of the Kugel Fischer plant. But catalogs stopped when the war broke out. First hand, up to date information is necessary now. The files of the Department of Justice are available whenever it's necessary to locate a desired individual. Kirsten? Mr. Ludwig Kirsten? 
Ludwig Kersten. You know, you're a hard man to find. It's the fourth address I've been to. I'm for the Department of Justice. Department of Justice? Nothing to worry about. I believe you can help us if you can arrange to come to Washington. <laughs> Wilson, Mr. Kirsten. How do you do, Mr. Kirsten? Sit down, please. Thank you. Mr. Kirsten, uh, when were you in Germany last? Uh, September 1941. Mm -hmm. I escaped from a concentration camp in Dachau. Oh. When we began 85, 90 hours a week to work, we tried to form our old union again. I see. My friend, they shut me this into Dachau. What was your job in Schweinfurt? Foreman of the heat reading department in the ball bearing section. I see. Great. I brought you some figures. Splendid. <laughs> My little grandson. Oh, you have a grandson, huh? He's an American now. Hmm. Not one word German he speaks. Only English. And <laughs> you're proud of that. <laughs> also, uh, here was the number of machines in my department. Mm -hmm. It is a two-story brick building, yes. right next to the railroad. Uh, oh, yes. You mean uh, down here in this section? Is it? That's right. The manufacture of ball bearings requires 12 distinct specialized operations. Damage to one operation could bottleneck the entire production. Refugee Ludwig Kersten fighting the new order, is a valuable man. From other sources, too, target information continues to grow. In London, for instance. Briggs speaking. This is Kerwood. I believe we have a man you'll be interested in. Yes, tomorrow morning at 9 at Intelligence Headquarters. Colonel Walter. Uh, thanks. I'll be there. Cigarette, Lieutenant? I prefer my own. You were once employed as a sales representative in Berlin, is that right? Selling anti-friction bearings, I believe. I have no obligation to tell you anything. Quite right, Lieutenant. No intention of insisting. But since we already know so many things about not half as much as we know about you English. Including the latest statistics on our production of anti-friction bearings? Yes. One of our new factories alone is turning out double the quantity of your most efficient factories. At least 30,000 pieces a day. I'll admit, you have us beaten at certain things. Your bearing industry is marvelous. Uh, especially the new diesel power equipment that's swine for. Isn't that so, Lieutenant? Yes. And that power plant is well concealed from your verdammte bombers. I have no obligation to tell you anything. Fine right, Lieutenant. We have no intention of insisting. Target information has been steadily growing. Yet certain known objectives must still be located. Strategic bombing mission depends on photo intelligence. Information concerning the enemy based on the study of aerial photography. Without it, an army is blind. High over Schweinfurt's arm mine, one clear day, flies a photo reconnaissance plane on a special mission. Central Interpretation Section, Headquarters Air Force Intelligence, officers study every detail of the assembled photographs. But several pieces in the complex jigsaw are missing. Here, where the new factory was believed to be located, appears to be a forest. Signs of camouflaged gun installations here, but no sign of a suspected airfield near Frankfurt. You can't do precision bombing without knowing your objectives. There are many ways of learning these things.
Come. Hello, Heinrich. How was the crossing? Very rough this time. Sit down. No, thank you. I have so many things to report. You were in Schweinfurt? Eight days. My friend hired me in his barn. He works in the powerhouse of the new factory. His wife is in the inspecting. Are the plants working full? Day and night. 30,000 bearings to turn out each day. And by the way, did your brother come across with you this... They found him three weeks ago. It is a picture of Schweinfurt, no? Yes. Here on the river is the new factory, camouflaged like a forest. I'll show you. This is the powerhouse. And the aircraft positions you find here, 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 uh, here. The foundation has been laid for the bombing of Schweinfurt. Now maps must be prepared, target overlays made, bombers ready. on course, altitude, weather, communications. All the technical wisdom essential to pinpoint bombing. Finally on Tuesday, August 17, 1943, they were on their way. The little steel balls that turn in a million Nazi weapons of war must be destroyed, must be smashed before they are born. miles. Altitude, 25,000. Speed, more than 250. Objective sighted. Open bomb bays. Steady now. And bombs away. Concealed powerhouse and new buildings. And then October 14th. Tons of bombs dropped. bombers, 593 men. Men like these who knew they might never come back. Yes, it was a stiff price. 
Nothing worthwhile can be bought without paying for it. Results? Well, the Nazis didn't take close shots of Swanford for us, but it looked like this from where our boys sat. One of the boys who came back said, all bearings are running all over Germany tonight. General Arnold said, Schweinfurt was the fountainhead of a first priority German war industry. We have cut down the enemy's tools of war before they can be forged. And should Schweinfurt ever be rebuilt, we shall strike again. Has strategic bombing been worth the price? Is German war industry being curtailed? Here's one of the answers. Guns and 88s had dug into the hills behind the beaches with all the natural advantages of topography. Lots of American boys were killed. Kids from the South, the Middle West, California, New England. We began to advance, held our games. The Luftwaffe offered little fight. Where were the swarms of folk wolves? Where were the Messerschmitts? Maybe they never reached the front lines. Maybe they never left Germany. Maybe they never came off the production line because their engines were never delivered. Maybe their engines were never delivered because the ball bearings were missing. Trucks were abandoned in the enemy's retreat. And tanks. Maybe they lacked fuel. Maybe the enemy lacked the locomotives to transport the fuel. Maybe he lacked the ball bearings that go into the locomotives that carry the fuel, that run the tanks. The real battles are ahead. New offensives will soon be struck on a scale undreamed of in history, consuming mountains of equipment and millions of men. Their ultimate destination? The heart of an empire. Will they be successful? Remember the old nursery rhyme? For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all from the want of a horseshoe nail. The small parts that are so vital to the enemy, so vital to us, give us the millions of horseshoe nails that can sweep us to victory. The more than 12,000 separate parts that go into a P-38. The 100 separate parts that go into an artillery shell. Whether your bench is six feet long or a mile, whether your ship has eight men or 8,000, give us these parts, these gadgets, these little sub-assemblies, these trifles, in the quantities that will speed the day when once more the skill of your hands will be turned to the arts of peace. Mm -hmm.